Good morning. Glad to be with you this morning. Hey, let me ask you a question. You ready for this? Okay. Who talks more? Who talks more, men or women? Do you know that answer? According to statistics, it shows that, uh, did you know in a year's time, men speak over 2.5 million words on average. That's a lot of words, right? Women over seven and a half million. I, I don't know. I don't know. It sounds like a, now of course we know that's not true of everybody, right? Because like Steve Powers is in the room, that type of thing. So we understand that some men do talk more than, than others. But anyway, the point here is not really gender. This is not a gender point. This is actually a point that we say a lot. We actually do. Everybody speaks a lot every day in your marriage, in your parenting, at work, at, with your friends. At, what's the point? The point is our words matter. That's the point that I'm trying to make. Words matter. Not just what we say, but can I say it this way? How we say it, uh, when we say it, where we say it, who we, why we even say it. Like, why would you even say that? Our motives, all of that is important. And don't forget, and it's not limited to just what we actually speak with our mouth, but what do you text? And what do you put on social media? And what do you put in that email? And how do you communicate in a lot of different ways? Hey, the title of the message today is simply this. The wise communicate respectfully. So let's talk about that because God's word speaks to that. Open your Bibles up to Proverbs chapter 18. We'll start there. We're going to be in a few different texts, but we'll be in the book of Proverbs. We're in a series called Summer of Wisdom. If you're a note taker back on the table, there are notes back there available for you, but also you can always go to YouVersion and YouVersion allows you to have electronic notes if you want it that way. And so what we're going to do is look at resolutions, you might say today, resolutions, five of them of respectful communication. So who needs wisdom for their words? Well, if we're growing in wisdom this summer, I think part of that growth, what would you say? Part of that growth is a necessary growth in what we say. Now, I'm going to ask you this. Who needs wisdom most in your family? Don't point to the person. Maybe, maybe you should just lean over and say to the person of who needs wisdom the most and just know that, hey, we both need a lot of wisdom. So I want to get right into it. If you're a note taker, let's go ahead and get right to the first point. It's in chapter 18. It's at verse number 21. Here's the point. Speak with intentionality because words have power. Would you agree with that? Speak with intentionality. Words have power. Look at the verse. Look at this verse. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, period. You can stop right there. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it eat its fruits. There's a fruitfulness of it, but the fruitfulness could be a life fruit or a death fruit. So I think it's an incredible statement when I look at that verse. It's a powerful thing. It speaks to why our words matter. Your words have power. Hey, think about it. Power to kill someone's reputation. Power, power to, to kill someone's spirit. Power, power to, to kill someone's sense of value or worth. But the same tongue also can breathe life into the discouraged person. It also has the power to breathe life into the lonely person. It has the power to breathe life into the confused person. It has, it, it has the power to breathe life into the person who's not spiritually alive, they're spiritually dead, and bring new life. But that same tongue, as I think about it, think about it for a second, the power of it, power to hurt or to heal, power to destroy peace or bring peace. Your tongue has the power for an unhealthy argument or a healthy conversation. And it has the power to divide or unite. It has the power to build up or the power to tear down. So how does that nursery rhyme go? You know the nursery rhyme? Sticks, you know the one? You know the one? Sticks and stones, say it with me. Sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never. Can I just call it out? Baloney. Can I just call it out? I'm just calling it out. Baloney. All right. For some of you, you may have harder words, but you're not a pastor. Okay. But listen, I've heard this also said, 
Eight to ten compliments always negates all the negative statements. Can I call out that one too? Baloney. That is, that is so not true. Sometimes there are words that are spoken that are so hurtful, I'll go to my grave with them. Can I just be honest with you? I'm, I'm being very real with you. I remember in high school, negative things said, listen, I had a lot of things said positively about me because I think I was an awesome person back in high school. But one or two people said some very, ne- I'm just having fun with you. You're not laughing at that. You think, you think I'm seriously prideful. Okay, okay. So, but, but, but some people said when I was in high school, some very negative things to me. I can't seem to get rid of them. And can I go to my adult life? Isn't it true that when I think about my adult life, the closer in proximity you are with a person, if there, for instance, is respect for a person that a hurtful comment can be deeper than ever. Is that true? I I think it's so true. And and so can I just pause for a moment and talk to you who carry hurt today? If you're carrying hurt right now, I, I really, can you do me a favor? Would you just look at me for a minute? If you're carrying hurt, deep hurt, like I've dealt with in the past, can I just say this to you as your pastor? You are not who others say you are. I'm emotional about it because hurtful words have been spoken to me in my life. How about you? You you need to hear, you need to believe this. You are not also, can I be very clear? You are not also who you say you are. You know that negative talk inside you? You know what I'm talking about, where you just kind of like, you you, you start dogging yourself. And for some, it's that pride thing. I'm so awesome. That's not true. And for others, it's that insecurity thing. Both are wrong. Here's the thing I want to say to you. I want you to hear this. Are you listening? I want you to hear it straight. You are who God says you are. That's it. You are who God says you are. You are chosen. You are forgiven. You are a new creation. You are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. God created you. He formed you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made according to God. You are who God says you are. That's the point that I want you to... So... If we're created in God's image, why do we use our words to hurt others? Because as as hurtful as it's been to me, I've been hurtful to other people too. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. I'm not the perfect guy that I wished I was and hoped to be. And, And so if we're using our words to hurt people, the question is, why? Why are we, why is that happening? Why is that, why? I would say it's simple. It's a heart issue. It's a heart issue. Look at Jesus addressing this topic. Luke chapter 6, verse 45 says that the good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good. Luke 6, 45. And the evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil. It goes on to say this. Catch this. For out of the abundance of of the heart, the mouth speaks. In other words, if your heart's hurt, your words are going to hurt. Or to say it another way, hurtful words coming up out of your mouth are revealing a heart that's been hurt. That's what it's revealing. So the reality is, I've said this like for years, hurt people hurt people. Are you tracking with me on that? Hurt people hurt people. And, and so if your heart is dark and your heart is dead and your words then will be a flow of death is what they will be. So let me ask you again, what, what describes you? Look at Proverbs 18, 21 again, our text. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So as you think about that, Solomon is saying, let me give you a picture. This is what Solomon's saying. Here's a picture here of a flavorful lamb shank on mashed potatoes and gravy and charred, um, what is that, charred 
asparagus. Does that not look pretty good? Our words can be like that. That's, I mean, if you understand that picture, you understand the verse. All right? That picture's like, good words. Uh-huh. You're all like, let's go to lunch, wherever that's at, you know? <laughs> That's at Steve's house, right? <laughs> anyway, I'm just messing around. How about the next picture here? Now this is a picture of uncooked chicken that's been sitting out for over a day. And when you eat this food, you're going to have a battle in the restroom with salmonella bacteria. That's what you're going to have if you do that. So... Do you want savory or do you want dangerous? Do you want tasteful or toxic? Do you want satisfying or harmful? See, if you understand these two pictures, you begin to understand this verse. So two questions. Let me finish up with this. Two questions on this point. How have you been negatively impacted by the power of someone else's words? And then the second question, how have others been negatively impacted by the power of your words? I mean, that's a heart thing. Check right there. Check, check. Let's jump on that. But let's keep rolling through the points here. Our second resolution to respectful communication, speak with gentleness because words bring healing. How true is that? Speak with gentleness. A gentle word can bring about healing into somebody's life. Think about this verse. We're in Proverbs 15 now, and we're at verse number one. It simply says this, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word, a harsh word stirs up anger. When I, when I saw that verse, I asked myself, I've experienced that. How many of you experienced that? Raise your hand. Have you experienced these? Is that verse an experience of yours? You so think about it, you're in an argument with someone and, and you level up the argument by coming to their emotion on that argument, right? And you level up with their volume and your harsh words only turn into more anger and more harsh words and it literally gets out of control. Have you been in that conversation before? For sure you have, for sure you have. But have you ever experienced the opposite? Think about the opposite. Rather than raising your emotions or your volume, you choose that soft answer and the anger resides. And you see it kind of going away just in how you approach it. Now, think about it, parents. Your child is out of control, okay? They're yelling, they're screaming. Your child is like, so how would you meet that? Well, I think it needs to be met with gentleness, when your child is in the middle of a temper tantrum, and it happens, right? When it happens, I would say, don't ignore it. This isn't your opportunity to just like, I'm just going to walk away and ignore it. But you enter into it in a gentle way, and you might have that prayer like I do. Lord, you're, you're entering into that conversation, kids going crazy, all right? Not that Stephen, Jessica, and Amber ever did anything wrong. They were always totally perfect, but that's, that's just for record's sake here, okay? But you're praying, like, Lord, give me a gentle, patient, and graceful spirit, you know, as I'm talking to them. Or how about your spouse? How about the spouse? Harsh words, hurtful words, making it worse, but that soft answer. I mean, Christy and I are both um, strong people, okay, we're strong, and we, we both have opinions, and, and sometimes those opinions don't line up, but I've learned, I've learned, can I say it the hard way, okay, how many guys have learned it the hard way, okay, I just, okay, and I, I just level down, and I soften it up, and I just go, okay, talk to me, I, I'm not having mental, you know, I have that kind of, con or how about the cultural issue? You're, you're on the cultural issue with that person at work or that person on social media and, and you just can't let it go and uh, you're just trying to win the immediate argument. You're going after it. You got to win that immediate one. And it only leads to further division. And the, but maybe if you soften up and play the long game instead of the short game, you find yourself winning by being gentle in your spirit. Harsh. Do you see the verse? Look at the verse again. That word harsh gives us an idea of painful and troublesome and strenuous and, 
and contempt, it gives that idea. Saul can be translated delicate or, or gentle or tender, expressing care. Gentleness is simply, what is gentleness? Gentleness is choosing to constrain personal power to serve someone else. Write that down. You listening to me? Gentleness is choosing to constrain personal power to serve someone else. So a quick awareness check. Which side of the word spectrum are you on? Do you think you speak to others with harshness or gentleness? Now look at the person next to you and ask him. No, I'm just kidding. Don't ask them. Don't ask them. No, seriously, don't, don't, don't ask them. I want to have a positive impact on the message today. But I would say this. This includes social media. This includes social media. I think it's extremely important how we manage social media. And you should be looking at social media as not your voice, but God's voice. And if you look at it as God's voice, then how you manage your social media might change. It just might change. And some of us need to change our approaches. Why would you say that? Because Jesus is truth. And I need to put the truth out there. But Jesus is also grace. And Jesus is always 100% truth and at the same time, 100% grace. You got to I just be careful. I, I'm just concerned that I have a beautiful blend, you might say, of grace and truth. That Lord, and the Lord can enable me to do that. I think God, the Holy Spirit, in his word, can guide me to help me to do that in all places in my life. Again, words matter. That's all I'm getting at. When we take the time to speak with gentle, gentleness, we can bring healing to families and bring healing to post with gentleness. The wise speak with gentleness. Let's move on to point three. Our third resolution is simply this. Here it is. Speak with restraint because words provoke misunderstanding. Be restrained. You say, where do you see that? Well, look at chapter 10 in Proverbs. Look at verse 19. When, when words are many, you see the verse there? When words are many, transgression or sin is not lacking. How many of you think before you speak? Honestly, we're in church now. How many of you speak before you think? Okay, I do that. That's, I'm, I'm doing that. Sometimes I'm just like I'm, like, I'm vomiting information before I'm thinking about it. And I'm thinking about it with you after the fact. Are you okay? And I'm like, oops, I maybe shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I do that. That's me sometimes. And, and uh, if I'm honest, sometimes I'm just speaking to speak, it feels like. And I don't think what I'm saying about a whole lot in... Uh, maybe you're like me. Can I just take that back? You ever had that? I, can I just take that back? And that's kind of impossible. But you might be going like, well, here's your justification. Well, if grace and truth are good and forgiveness can be extended, and even when I say hastily, what's the problem? I just kind of just vomited some information out. Oh, well, I can take it back. Can you? Can you take it back? What if I pulled a tube of toothpaste out right now. I was going to sample that today and actually I just forgot the toothpaste. But what if I just took the toothpaste and squirted the toothpaste out right here? I'm just squirting my toothpaste out, squirting it out. And then I said to you, okay, I need a favor from you. Can you put all that toothpaste back into it, the tube? Can you just put it back in there? All right, put it back into the, you can't do that, right? And, and so what, I'm, what am I saying? I, I think you get the point maybe. Once we say something, you can't take it back. It's like squirting out toothpaste. You just can't get it back in. Like you can't take it back. So let me give you some wise things as we're thinking about. What are we thinking about? Restraint. That's what we're thinking about. Restraint. And as we're thinking about it, Proverbs 10, verse 19 again. When words are many, transgression or sin is not lacking. Here are some other Proverbs. How about Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 3 as you're thinking about this? Whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. He who opens his mouth wide, his lips come to ruin. It's speaking about restraint, again, having self-control, having discipline and character about what you speak. How about this one, uh, Proverbs 17, 27? Whoever restrains his words has knowledge. 
And he who has a cool spirit is a man of understanding. You see the impact there. And, and then what about Proverbs 17, 28? Even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he's deemed intelligent because he speaks less. So can, can I just say it this way? You don't have to have an opinion about everything. I don't, I don't have to hear everything you believe about everything all the time, all the time, all the time. I've been in meetings like that with other spiritual leaders who felt like they had to say everything they knew about everything about everything. And I'm like, okay, look, this is way too much, guys, you know. Some of the most valuable words spoken to me, though, have been people who have been restrained but are incredibly concerned about Mike. And even though it's been hard for Mike to receive it at times, it's been incredibly helpful because it came in the right way at the right time and the right place and, and things like that. So let's take a moment and consider maybe how Jesus did this. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2. So if our goal is to be like Jesus, Jesus committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, all right? Think about all that Jesus went through. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to the one who judges righteously, God his Father. Even Jesus had restraint in his words when he was unjustly treated. All right, let's keep rolling. Number four, the fourth resolution. Speak with insight because words provide encouragement. Notice the encouragement. Look at Proverbs 12. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down. But a good word makes him glad or encouraged. You could translate it that way. A good word encourages. Have you been encouraged by good words? I have been so encouraged by good words so often. How about this one? Proverbs 15, 23 says this, to make an apt answer is a joy to a man and a word in season. How good it is. Or how about Proverbs 16, 24? Gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body. Now, honeycomb sweetness you know, it's a metaphor, right? All right. Honeycomb sweetness is a metaphor. But the medical professionals will tell you this. You probably know this, right? That whenever there is a patient surrounded by positive, optimistic, caring people who build them up with affirming words, that that person has a much better chance at getting better. And when that patient is alone and gets no encouragement, and they're surrounded, though, maybe by negative or critical or pessimistic people that they don't get better. It actually physically affects you words. They literally do. Why? Because pleasant words bring health. Pleasant words bring health. And doubly blessed, not am I only giving positive words, but receiving them, getting it both ways. I mean, if you can get it both ways, that's a double blessing to me. Proverbs 4, 5, get wisdom, get insight, and do not turn away from the words of my mouth. Insight is more than just a food for thought, but it's challenging us and helping us to clarify a subject maybe or change a direction maybe completely even changing what we hear. So a good word could be sometimes a challenging word. It's not just encouragement like it's all fluff. That's what I'm trying to get at here. Matter of fact, let me see, show you this. Up on the screen here, you'll see something about wrong words and wrong time and wrong person. Maybe this quote would help you a little bit. Wrong words coming at the right time to the right person. Well, that's foolishness, and that's what Proverbs is talking about. Right words, but coming at the wrong time to the right person, that just brings about some aggravation to people. Right words at the right time, but to the wrong person, that's just frustrating. You're speaking to the wrong person about this. But right words, right time, the right person, that's encouragement. 
That's what we're going for. That's what we're aiming for. So can I just ask you, who needs a text from you right now? Maybe you need to pull your phone out right now while I'm talking and just like text somebody. Or who needs that email today? Or who needs a postcard written up and mailed out to them or sent to them? Who needs that word? Who needs to hear affirmation from you today? Who today needs to hear approval? Or, or maybe today, maybe it's your spouse, maybe it's your children, maybe it's somebody not here with you, but maybe it's somebody that just needs to hear something from your heart, the heart of life I'm talking about, not the heart of death, but from a heart of life to give them life-giving words. Perhaps, perhaps you taking the initiative on a strained relationship could be the beginning of God working on something today, doing a great work in their life. And maybe the reason they're not even living for God is because of words in the past. And maybe you could start bringing about that healing that's been lost and began a long pathway towards salvation or, or transformation or, or renewal in Christ. Lastly, let's keep rolling. Speak words, speak with boldness. <clears throat> Because words save souls. Words save souls. What does the Bible say? Proverbs eleven thirty. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and the one who is wise saves souls. Now, of course, of course, when you see that verse, let me clarify. Jesus is the only one who saves. But he uses us, right? He, he does it with us. We're part of that process. And Proverbs 28 reminds us the righteous, do you, know, you know the verse, right? The, say it with me. The righteous are what? As bold as a lion. So I want to be bold with my life-giving words, knowing that it can save people's lives. Now let me just clarify, I've, I've done this many times with you in the past, but boldness, what it is not and what it is. Boldness is not you becoming the street preacher, preacher with the megaphone and, and the sandwich board and screaming at everybody, judgment, you die today or something like that. That's not, that's not what it's talking about when it says boldness. It's not talking about even you wearing the John 3.16 t-shirt to Kings Island. It's not actually even just talking about that. Boldness is not going to social media and telling everybody, get right with God or die tomorrow. You know, that's not really what boldness is saying. Because again, the wise, what's the title of the message? The wise communicate respectfully, right? So let me help you with this. Boldness is simply this. I would say loving people, looking for people, listening to people, learning about people, and when there is an opportunity, leading people to Jesus. And this can happen with your neighbor or your coworker someone you meet at a coffee shop, at a school, wherever you're at. Acts 4.13 reminds us, and when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated common men, they were astounded, and they recognized that they had been with, do you know the last word? Jesus. We cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. I mean, that boldness comes out of that. Boldness comes from being with Jesus. Boldness comes from being transformed by Jesus. Some of my boldest moments is coming out of my time with God. You know what I'm saying? You get along with him and he's speaking to you and you're having that time and that relationship is so strong. And then boldness is what, so what is boldness? Boldness is, can I tell you about the difference that Jesus has made in my life? Boldness is, I struggle with that too. And just as Jesus gave me victory, he can give you victory too. Boldness is, hey, I attend High Point Church. Why don't you come sit with me at church and be with me and let's do this together. Boldness Boldness, I've already kind of alluded to it, is truth and grace, or grace and truth. Again, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and the one who is, who is wise saves, soul, so it saves souls. So, so somebody, somewhere, think about it this way, somebody, somewhere, opened their mouth and talked to you. 
Somebody was bold enough to talk to you. Who was that? I mean, are you a Christian today? Are you a believer? Did you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ? Did it become personal? Are you a child of God today? If you are, somebody in boldness talked with you. Now, it might have come from the pulpit. Yeah, it might have come up from the stage or somebody preaching to you. But high chances are somebody sat down with you, somebody talked with you, somebody was concerned. Maybe it was somebody in the family. Maybe it was a friend. Somebody was concerned about it. So here's the word. Are you, are you giving life to others? Are you, are, are you giving life with your words to others? In a divided nation, right? In a divided world, well, that's just really Satan's thing, right? He's all about the division thing, right? But in a, in a culture of all that division that's going on, whatever the division is, and, the, and there's a long list of things to be divided over, can we not agree that our words are super impactful and that we want to use them to see people come to Christ? And if the Lord would help us with that. So we're going to close out here. Jason's going to come and he's going to play lightly on that song, Word of God Speak. We want God's Word to speak. How about you? I want God's Word to speak to somebody today. And I want to be used as his tool to do that. And I'm, and I'm asking Andy to come and close the message out and pray over these five points with us together. Can we just, can we just take a moment and do that? That heartfelt prayer. I hope the Lord stirred your heart. I would say, I would say can, I, can I just be a pastor for like one minute here? Can I just be your pastor? If you're going to talk to somebody, the most powerful thing that you can talk to them, I, I found the most impactful way to help somebody has been using God's Word, just like using some verses, finding those verses that are really impactful. And the second thing that I always add to that is, how has that affected me? Like if... If you're speaking words that haven't stirred you, like what, what stirred you deeply? Do you remember when you were saved? I mean, sharing that salvation testimony, not in a three hour sit down, but like in maybe uh, three minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes, depending on the situation, just sharing some scripture and sharing God at work in your life, man, uh, phew, life changing for sure. Over and over and over and over, I've seen that. Let's all stand and thank each other for being with each other. Say something nice to somebody today on your way out. God bless you. Walk in his strength. Oh, bye.